Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Rangru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, I know this map looks familiar, but we haven't seen it in quite a bit of time. This is Brest West. So we are still in the east, uh, but we're over into Brest here. So Rang, who is fighting today, and what of this terrible divisions tournament is going on? Well, on the left hand side in blue, we have green HC playing as Pandelaire with a flatline income. And on the right hand side, we have Von Paulus playing as a Paulus Home Army with a flatline income as well. Right, so look at the Panzer Lair. You and I were talking about this going into it. Why or what does the Panzer Lair have that makes them terrible? Well, like a lot of German Panzer Divisions currently in the game, like, you think Panthers, Tigers, and Panzer Grenadiers are awesome, but they're not. Panzer Grenadiers is not that good and actually doing infantry killing stuff, and Panzer Fours usually get outclassed by T-34-76s because T-34-76s are cheaper and you usually just beat them. And Whereas it is an equal fight, run and run. It's just, it's just not that good because tank gameplay and... Machine gun infantry gameplay is not fantastic. It's not due to you don't really have the numbers as we see constantly of Russian divisions. So by comparison, then why the Polish Home Army? Because they only got infantry, and that's really it. Like uh, tanks is very lackluster. You get like a few heavy tanks, and that's it. And you got some decent air power. You got like, not much artillery really. The infantry is cool, and I love it. I hope Polish, I wish we see Polish home army more often because they're such an awesome thematic division. But they're just once you just get past the pretty cool and ragtag infantry, there's not really much to it because you don't really have much other like more heavier equipment to help you out in the ground game. It does seem a bit of a harder kind of moment there. Hmm. Looking outside of that, uh, we are going to see a bit of a. Polish push in the south, but I don't know if it's really going to happen. It does seem like this is still the green room, so maybe until we get past rehearsal, we'll see a completely different kind of association here. Yeah. Um, but for now, Storm Pioneers and Flammenwerfers are going to keep them at arm's length. I mean, good luck. Yeah, it's, it's gonna not, not going to be easy. Hot fight down south, man. Indeed. Actually, I do kind of like is we have. Both these browning trucks and these, you know, two centimeter flak thirties down to the south. It, it's not something that you would think as being the most vital positioning of anti-air, <laughs> but you have to realize that the browning is is, you know, you use the term lackluster. That's being putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a nice thing because it's a transport for the twenty mil, so you pretty much just pay like what, like five points for a bit of extra, like four machine gun. Like, if someone came up to me and was like, Hey, Rang, you want to buy a brown machine gun for five points? I'd be like, cool, where's the conversion first off for five points Canadian dollars? And secondly, uh, can I get this machine Bitcoin. gun? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a lovely thing about seeing these more terrible divisions. We got to see some interesting matchups here. We got to see... More classic German Panzer divisions all that often because of reasons I stated before, you just better sticking with more infantry or mechanized troops, troops or divisions or uh, minor Axis nations for the Axis in general. And same thing of Home Army, because they're also, I, like I said, they're awesome and it, it's cool to see them being played. And they're very good in a map like this and like forest fights as they got some excellent CQC infantry. I'm sorry, just watch this fucking wolf over here making a minor run of this IL-2, but I think his bloodlust is going to see him bite the dust here. Yeah. This is this yak's coming in as well, good lord. But, yeah, the, the fuck wolf is flying very high, and he managed to get out of the sky without crashing into the ground, which is, you know, arguably an accomplishment. Very, I mean, at this point, yeah, definitely in the war. Um, now, we have this Pack 40 who's all by his lonesome here, trying to push back on some of this infantry, and that was a bit of a foolish move there, but... Hey, he made that decision. I'm not going to fault him forward, I suppose. Yeah. He's got the Falkroth trying to come in, but the IL-2 got a really good head-on gun run on him. But he's low on ammunition, the IL-2, so I don't think he's going to be useful for much longer. Oh, well, it's helpful <laughs> enough. Okay. <laughs> 
He used like 20 bullets here. Oh, he only has 10 shots left and just enough to finish off the Fokker Wolf. Absolute, absolute beast those IL-2s are, man. Not for nothing, but I think the uh, Fuck Wolf that we had there had a, a leaky fuel tank. So maybe he ran out of fuel. He, you know, he mm -hmm. got the top up before he left. Yeah, he made he made an emergency uh, pit stop for fuel. Some someone's gonna come in with a supply truck and, you know, top him <laughs> up, and probably have to assemble the plane back together. Yeah, and and, uh, and the pieces of the pilot as well. I'm mm -hmm. sure. Now we are gonna see 81 millimeters start to engage down south. In fact, we actually we also have. Another impromptu anti-air camp going to be set up to the northern side of things, which I think is a good plan. We have seen a couple of bombing runs there. Yeah. But, when all is said and done, Panto definitely on the ropes a bit. Yeah, it's not... On a map like this, I kind of have difficulties with how it's very much infantry focused, and Panzer infantry is just not good. Same with a lot of Panzer division infantry in general. So this is, you know, that's really what he's going to have to try and struggle with. Of course, when it comes to the tank fights, he has many more tanks and fire support compared to Von Paulus. But he's trying to get them into position, which is the huge ask to begin with. Oh, and that's the thing. We're actually seeing up north, for example, we see a couple of anti-tank guns taking out, I believe it was a pair of P4s. Yep. Uh, and while you may have more tanks, you cannot afford to be kind of profligate with their lives. Uh, and Debra's actually, sorry, going down south again. We're going to see... Well, the Ochos are coming around. I'm not entirely sure why they're quite so panicky by that B4 there, but the Ochos are coming around. Yep. Yeah, this is very aggressive pussy of the Ochos early on is... Lowering the Von Paulus get quite a lot of territory. A Panzer IV is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass unless you can kill it. He does have a uh, Trot, the Hatcher, the friendly Hatcher. <laughs> Sounds like a kid show. It's Schwat <laughs> Lee Hatcher. <laughs> the bunch of kids like dancing around it, and Trot has like some googly eyes and a smiley face on the front. Oh, of course. Yeah. And you know the clap in their hands. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Now to the north, we continue to have these Armada Pack Thirty, you know, Pack Fifties with the, what's it, Thirty Six right next to it? Yeah, Thirty Six yeah. next to it. Polish Thirty Six, indeed, and yeah. and not to be outdone, we're bringing in three more anti-tank guns, two more fifty mils and a seventy-five mil. So, uh, I believe the next great hurdle to be surmounted here is to take out that Panther. It's like sinking the Bismarck, except, mm -hmm. you know, sinking him on land. Yeah. Gonna, once they blow him up, they're just going to chuck him in the lake. Say they sunk him out, right? At that point, the Soviet Navy's going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're actually seeing quite... Yeah, these 81 mils are actually doing a really good job here down south. We're actually seeing smoke, and I love seeing good smoke play here. But I wonder if he's going to try and get close with his leader unit, maybe? With the Faust for trying to get the Panzer IV kill, it would definitely be... Good call at the moment, considering the Panzer IV is charging head-on without any infantry cover in a pile of smoke. So he doesn't need infantry cover; he's got smoke cover. Yeah, he's got he's got soul power. Uh, but other than that, that seems to be the only game in town at the moment. Yep. Just the mortars, just smoking everything because they got them. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a slow plus one advantage here from Von Paulus. I think for Green, his best bet is trying to piss up north, but as we've seen, it's just like, like Napoleonic cannon hill with all sorts of artillery guns here. Um, unless he can get some artillery of his own to try and knock out those guns, I don't think he's going to be making much progress. Highly doubtful, highly doubtful. Um, oh, sorry, that uh, to get rather the fuck a wolf coming to the north. Looking to take out some of these anti-tank positions, indeed, honestly, even if they stress it out, that will be much better than what's been existing before. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, I think this IL-2 is going to have just enough ammunition probably to cause some hassles. I won't get the angle, however. Well, don't worry, the fuck wolf will still stay around for some stinking reason. No, yeah. no, he looks like he's actually leading. Maybe he's trying to bait the IL-2? Bait him for... He's not beating him. Going in. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's going in for a strafing run. He's not done there, Fokker Wolf. He's going to be. 
Uh. Now back to the south. Yes, we are going to see a rush by this Polish infantry, and we're going to see them rather crudely thrown to shreds by this Gephard and the P4 from close range, and the Flammenwerfer, who is going to rain fire down at them with the Eye of Sauron. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame that the smoke has dissipated, yeah. Because he was very close to getting his leader within Faust Patron range, but it is not meant to be. No, it is not. And indeed, we see more Pigrant and another Gepper South trying to stabilize the situation, to put it mildly. Because right now we are back courtesy of these brave Pigrant right here in the center of the map. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's. It was, uh. It was P Grand, it's definitely gonna help out as you need some infantry. But as we're seeing here with Green HD, like, with his armor, yeah, he's allowing him to get his advantage. Even just Gephardt, which aren't, you know, the most fanciest of units. When you're just fighting infantry, especially infantry without AT, you can make, you can make him work. Certainly can. Now, we're going to consistently see these Focke Wolf bombing runs, and I wonder to a certain extent if he's just trying to cause the Brownings and the Flak guns to run out of ammo. Uh, but my friend, those guns can kill. I'm not entirely sure why he's being so lackadaisical about his aviator's lives here. Yeah, definitely want to be loose. Yeah, especially his pants late. You don't have a whole lot of air power available to you. You want to try and keep him alive for as long as possible. That's certainly the ideal, anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, down south, we're waiting for this, I think, for this Gephard maybe to get online before they start engaging with all, all this infantry. They have a peak run behind the front lines, but there's this huge knot of poles who are sitting in those trees. And outside, I think, of an artillery barrage, which I'm surprised hasn't happened yet, uh, they're not likely to go anywhere anytime. Uh, yeah, you just don't have the CQC infantry as Panzer to try and route them out in a head-on fight. You really do need... Some sort of artillery or air power to you know, get the suppression, get the damage in, and then use the Panzer Grenadiers and mop up. The mildly surprising thing here about this is that I'm surprised we haven't seen one of those Focke Wolf gun runs, bombing runs down here to the south. That's what, six squads? Mm -hmm. All within 200 meter diameter? This is, this is begging for something to happen. Yeah. Up north, we are seeing a post here from part of Zansi's trying to capture his uh, town, but the turn plan is going to make it a little bit tough for him. Oh. Tough, but not impossible. Even oh. as watched the, the P4 and the Panther are going to engage a couple of anti-tank guns in the town, and um, you might suspect that, you know, that finishes out the way that it does rather consistently. Yeah. With Russ, everyone being freaked out. Yes, sir? Seeing a Panther from... The army Kuroja side, because they do get three Panthers and one Tiger available to them in B phase if you decide to take them, of course. So a little bit of extra heavy armor definitely helps out. Definitely not going to be enough to go mano to mano to a huge amount of Panzerlair armor, but it doesn't matter if your Panzerlair armor goes kaboom to, well, stolen anti-tank guns. Doesn't seem to be. Get part down to the south, by the way, goes down courtesy of the IL-2 rocket plane. And this is certainly one of those planes I feel like kind of looks at anti-air anti fire, laughs at it, and just kind of does another line off the cockpit dashboard. <laughs> well, think about it. How often do you see an IL-2 go down to concerted ground fire? That's Maybe three true. or four sources, and they just they don't That's die. That's true, especially in 1v1s where you don't have the, you know, dedicated anti-air nets that you do in team games. And you usually only have, like, a few Bofors-style guns. In your 1v1s, which is not enough to get through a star aluminium of the IL-2's cockpit. Uh, by comparison, if you look to the Focke Wolf to the north, we have those two Brownies and the two centimeter anti-aircraft guns. Literally, the second they fired, the radio was overheating. I was like, okay, got to go back to base. Yep. I, I can't, I can't do this today, guys. I'm sorry. Seems a, a, a little bit silly, yes, sir. Yeah, it's just a pretty good push here so far from, from Paulus. I mean, the one side he really has to worry about is this northern sector, because that's the best sector for green to push. But with all those partisanis and bringing in the panther, it's going to make it a pain in the ass for green to actually push. True, but I would not say that we should ignore the south. If you look to the south, we have 
259s, we have P3s, we have a P4, we actually, it looks like another P4 coming in now. We've got some infantry, we've got some Gephards, again, unleash the air power here, ignore the north for the moment, it's not going to go anywhere else fast. Yeah, like, he has all his armored forces down to help, but can't use, he can't use them right now. You know, it's just it's sort of a race of points, getting so much armor here, and not actually doing anything with it. They're up north there, he's starting to get... He's got two Panther A's out coming in, as well as a 120 mil mortar that definitely help out in routing out that hill position, so maybe that'll be enough to try and turn the tide on the northern side. Well, he has certainly lost everything else in that area, so it's got to gotta be a little bit cautious. But also, uh, we have failed to call it out here, but the two Ochos able to take back that town to the southeast of the bridge that, you know, around which we're kind of focusing right oh, yeah. here. That's definitely a good bridge out to hold. Certainly is. Certainly is. Both sides uh, slapping away of their artillery. 120 mil trying to round out the home army's 80 runs and forcing them to relocate for now. And we're seeing a tiger, but a uh, Polish tiger. Or Tigris, which is a, probably a cooler name than Tiger, honestly. Well, I, I can't say I've met too many Polish Tigers. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe in a Bengal, zoo. sure. Siberian, yes, I guess. But, uh, yeah, that Polish Tigris is not something that, that's come up very often on Animal Planet there. No. Worth mentioning in the meantime, this is Gephard, who's putting fire down into this town. And we're seeing a tentative push. It's a very, very delicate probe. Yeah. Uh, to push back another squad of Soviets here. The Pigrons are lucky, though, that there are no more Molotovs over here from those Polish troops. Yeah, they would have been dead by now if there was a Molotov in that squad, but... Definitely needs, like, a bit... I mean, he needs more infantry to take that town first off, but more importantly, he really needs to try and secure his northern hill, I think, before trying to make any southern maneuvers. Well, it seems like he disagrees with you, because we have a Hawk Wolf coming in, and I imagine there's two IL-2s coming in the direction. Yep. And he gets morale damage, but that's literally it. Yep. A roll of Hawk Wolf get away. That is his no. aggression for the day. No. No way in hell. No, he's, got, he's getting Trini mode from both sides, yeah. Maybe? He's, he's fast, no. he's furious, but he's dead. He's flaming. Yeah, he's he's on fire. Oh yeah, he's hot stuff. <laughs> uh, we are seeing I don't, I don't want to call it a, a, a secession of hostilities, but it looks like both sides content to kind of lick their wounds for a moment, as the poles concentrating a huge amount of infantry, and indeed starting to push forwards as we speak. Yeah, we and got. That, oh my God, that pack. 75 had a beautiful little line of sight to take out the Gephard. On paper, that line, that sight line doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. well, they just shoot through the paper of that gun, you know? Yeah, it, it's hard to think that there's any time that a gun would not shoot through paper. Yeah. Unless it's like a water gun. Just make it wet. Then you have very useless paper. I don't know, man. I've definitely seen that what, the, the Japanese game show where they have... Oh, Takeshi's to... Castle? Yes, you're right. <laughs> you're, I, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I've seen that that game. I, I know that definitely works. Uh, but the Partisans, <laughs> not to be outdone, they'll bring their own private party over here to the Strumpio and the Pentagon here in this northern forest. And indeed, you take this ridge and you dominate the battle space in front of it. So, yeah. fantastic idea there. It is just... That ridge is such a huge, like, strong point on this whole northern side of the map. And it really does benefit the right side a bit. Uh, Von Paulus, through the positioning, has his spawn point pretty much starts on that ridge. So, if he, yeah, if he can just push on through here and get his Tiger into one of these forests and just look down, bang, 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 here goes the tanks. It's the sound that tanks make when they shoot. You know, I'm happy to me because I wasn't sure. Where did this Panzer Grenadier down south get, oh, no, get into his been, position? 
He's been there for literally the last ten minutes. Uh, he was to he was about two hundred meters southeast of that uh, PTRT. He he made a very poor decision with his life. Well, every now and again, you know, when you're young, you think you want to do something with your life. When you get older, you realize that sometimes your life decisions and uh, put you in an early grave. But uh, yeah. and sometimes that message you just of get hope stopped by a checkmate anti-tank piece. Exactly. Was that message of hope was, I'm proud to say that message of hope came from, you know, Con Ulrich today, so. <laughs> Kids, stay in school. Yeah, um. <laughs> other right hatchers are going to come for you, and trust me, you do not want to mess with the hatcher. True. Yeah. That is absolutely accurate, honestly. Even even being next to one of those things, it could be nobody in it, it's still terrifying. Mm -hmm. And indeed, this Panther Patrol that you were talking about up north, well, they're getting into action right now. I'm doing some some light suppression here, nothing too huge. Yeah, but at long be... range they have the advantage. Yes. Yes. Now, also, I kind of like the fact that we finally, at long last, have an 88 on the map, and it is it does some considerable HE damage, but for some reason decided to stop firing on this infantry, as they continue to fall back deeper into the trees. Yeah. He's got two ATAs, so he's very serious about getting some proper anti-air coverage out. Very soon, the he has two 88s is going to be down to he had two 88s, and now it's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say to run more mortars uh, during some road. But hey, he actually kept his transport near the ATA and used it to load it back up to reposition it. Which is a very that smart right move. right there. Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's something we, we barely see anything of anymore, and I feel like it's such an underutilized... Ooh, Ooh the other one somehow goes happens. down, though. I think it was uh, the anti uh, pack 50 mil. Just barely had line of sight on it. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It is such like, a good thing to do with those armor transports. I, I, I always usually just rush them up and get them killed. So you keeping them with your flat guns. It does increase the flat gun survivability by quite a bit. And the half track, for that matter, too. Mm hmm. He does not want to be near the front line, even though he has a machine gun. Forgive me, I'm watching as this Panther G over here gets engaged by its former brethren. Or more accurately, lures them into an anti tank gun front as yep. these pack 75s, these captured packs, are going to just absolutely shred them. Yeah, and are they. Yeah, they're pretty close. Well, kind of close. They do have a good shot of. And some kills on the Panthers, as we know, with SC2's armor penetration mechanic, is a little bit of black magic. The reason the Panthers are like, oh yes, let's shoot the Tiger one time, let's shoot the Panther one time, maybe we'll fire the anti-tank guns. <laughs> it's a, a very target-rich environment for them. Yes, but uh, you kind of need to make a commitment, man. Yeah. And I believe, yeah, this IL-2 is going to wreak havoc. Oh, yeah. This is, this is the biplane, isn't it? No, no, it's... It's the IO-2. It's your unkillable... Oh, yeah, the... Yeah. Monster. Are we thinking of, like, the PO-2? Probably. Yeah. Probably. But it's enough on IO-2, yo. Just in case you got sick of the first one. Here's the second. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, it's one of those things... If, if, if one is good, two must be better. Mm-hmm. And we don't talk about having three of them. No. No, no, no. That's that's uh, you know an all for one, all for you know, one for all kind of moment there that we can't possibly discuss. It's like a black hole thing. Now that that Flak eighty eight that unfortunately before lost its half track, uh, he will very soon lose his life, I imagine, as all the mortars are engaging him. Yeah. The nice thing about Flak eighty eight, they do have a lot of HP, so so we're gonna be a while before he goes down. But several down south, we still have to, like. We finally seen an infantry push here with Pandragon and to try to route out the Ochos. Pardon me, the Ochos. But it's such a same scene, like, he has so much forces here, but he hasn't done anything with them for over 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a yeah. huge race of potential. Even if it's, it, now he has 120 more mortar down south, but he really should be using it to fire onto the forest before actually moving up any further. Or firing on the Soviet artillery. Yeah. You see right three. now, the Flak 41 has just been completely shredded. Yeah, but that's an expensive loss. Yes, it is. You got, I think, three of them? Four of them? 
Yeah, I think you can. Like, you get like two of them in B phase and then four of them in C phase per card. They usually only get one card, so. I, 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 know, I don't know how many he took, but it's still. I mean, it's also like 115 points or 120? 120 for Flak 88, so. You know, it's, that's a bit of a hole in the in the pocket. Yes, indeed. Oh. Now, watch this Gepard down in the trees here, kind of being in its natural habitat, you know? Good to see wildlife returning back. It's it's a conservation thing, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you have to remove the active predators in the area, those invasive species, we call them Soviets. <laughs> But you know what? I think I think the Panzer Lair, they're they're really good naturalists. You know, let's look at the Pegrins in there, let's protect the the native species. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. It's a story of, of World War Two that never gets told. Uh just like that P4 over here just never really got to know what love is, uh, after getting taken out, I think by the probably by the, the Schwat. No, not the Schwat, excuse me. Probably by one of the pack thirty the capture yep. packs. Yeah, Pack 50's in on that southern hill is in a perfect position. If you just look at his line of sight, he can just see right down the road. And if it's just that, you know, light to medium armor, he's gonna have a field day. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Absolutely. We're finally seeing that, like, hill being broken there. Green hate steep pushing through. You can finally get some Pandagrand ears into the forest and maybe make, you know, a bit of a head rate down south, but... He really needs his mortar to start firing on, on that anti-tank gun to knock it out. He can probably deal with a shot, but the pack 38 is... Oh, he, he can't deal with a shot. Maybe? Or, I don't know. I, I doubt no, it. You, you have to have a 3 to 1, generally, especially for that tank. Again, not for nothing, but that is a pretty hefty little machine there. Mm -hmm. And here comes the PL, excuse me, IL. You got me doing it. <laughs> the IL... To just take out pretty much anything that's even remotely terrifying. The Russian air Headway. power on this has been handled superbly. Yeah. Yeah, with army, army Crowder, or home army, I should really say, I mean, you don't have a lot of... I mean, we've seen... You don't have a lot of numbers in terms of, like, powerful ground forces. They have those anti-tank guns, but you don't get many of them. He's just been doing a very good job of keeping them alive. But his air power is... Pretty on point. A line. I was like, another kill here. Oh. But just like that, what happened to the entire Air Force or the entire attacking force? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five plumes of smoke. Uh, gee, I wonder. Hmm. Maybe having a barbecue. Ooh, yes, a giant uh, Vermock roast. Mm -hmm. Yes, no doubt. No doubt. And the last one dies over here, and indeed, the last IL-2 doesn't even get a chance to unload his rockets on something. I imagine he's quite upset about it. Yeah. Looking at it, really, perspective from the Polish perspective, we have another concentration of force to the north. But who really gives a good, you know, poot about it? Yeah, I mean, he's got most of it. Like, he pretty much has the entire northern ridge under his control. And just by having it under control, as you can see, Green Hate C had to take a much more defensive position on his own ridge line. And he's not going to be making much progress yeah. No, no, highly doubtful here. I, I can't help but feel it might be better for us to go to times two, maybe shortly after 29 minutes here. What do Sounds you think? That's good. Alright, 2905. We're going to make the, make the jump. There we go. All right, folks, and um, you know it's fourteen ten right now. Again, Green HD has not necessarily mishandled a good chunk of this. I think it's more of he was kind of screwed by geography and then kind of by inaction. Yeah, yeah, this is this is not a good map for Panzerlair in general. Heck, a lot of run v one maps aren't really good for Panzerlair, uh, in my opinion, right now. But uh, you know, sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I am surprised about is that nothing was ever really truly done about that anti-air. I know it was not a game winner, let's say, for Von Paulus, but you have to admit the German air power would be a lot more devastating if they actually could bring in some GU-88s or Focke-Wolves or whatever have you. 
and not be afraid of immediately losing them. Yeah, Which like... Right... Yes, sir. Yeah, like, he did have, like, some of his... Uh, I, I think the main loss to his airplanes was really due to the Soviet air power. He did have anti-air pieces out, but they just got killed by artillery guns, as we keep seeing. I'm also really surprised, you know, with his mortars and whatnot, he didn't... He wasn't a bit more proactive in trying to knock out Polish anti-tank guns, because they don't get a lot of them. And if you can knock those anti-tank guns out, then your tanks can have a bit more of a fun time in the sea phase, running around, blowing stuff up, without, you know, pesky guns blowing you up. It's rather um, ungentlemanly of them that way, that's, that's for darn sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm laughing at the fact there's this horde of poles running through the southern forest, and just to the east of them, there's a peak wren just kind of chilling in the trees. <laughs> and I think Reen made a good call here. He tapped Holy out. Holy crap. And that's exactly Holy why. Holy crap. I don't... It didn't feel like that. I, I guess it kind of did, actually. Thinking about it. Yeah, he did well, lose a lot of stuff. And, oh, 37 like, mil, was... multiple kills, killed the Flak 88, killed a half-track, killed an anti-tank gun. Um, the IL-2s, three ground kills. Pac-75, four ground kills. Even the Schwat killed a couple. I mean, like, this this wasn't entirely unexpected. Yeah. If you look at losses here... One IG-18, that's about it. Yeah. But, you know, have a terrible division, get a terrible result. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> terrible divisions, tournament guys. So yes, though, if you like what you see with this, uh, keep coming back because we're going to be bringing you some more from this terrible Divisions tournament. We, of course, as always, a big thank you to the huge community who kind of supports all these events, in this particular case here, Robert. Um, but yeah, guys, keep coming back if you want to see more of these kinds of matchups. Any other thoughts there, Ryan? Uh, None today. All right, folks, remember to tip your waitresses. Until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.